Okay, let's uh, continue. So uh, we have been looking at the uh, fully differential op amp, and uh, in the last class we essentially saw that <coughs> for this fully differential op amp, uh, the global feedback we have that will set the difference of the outputs. But for setting the common mode or the average, we need a separate feedback, and that was the uh, common mode feedback, and. the problem was happening because we had two current sources biased independently so which meant that uh, this node voltage was not defined so the fix was to basically sense the output common mode and set it to a required value by fixing only one independently and tune the other based on the first one so which means you could fix either this current source and tune this one or vice versa and uh, this was the basic idea you sense the common mode that is just a fancy way of saying saying that i'm taking the average of the voltages compare it to a required reference and tune the current and uh, we saw two uh, implementations one was this yeah that was it yeah so one was without any amplifier wherein you sense the common mode and directly connected to the gate uh, this works but the issue was the common mode was set to some vdd minus vsg that was completely not under your control to exercise a better control on the output common mode we have to use an additional amplifier and uh, when we did that we saw that with respect to the common mode signals it looks like a two stage ota so for the common mode feedback loop we need a separate compensation and that we did using uh, miller and uh, yeah that's what gave rise to the final thing so let's continue uh, let me actually copy this yeah so in the, these two variants that we have seen the uh, one issue that you can see is the following although the common mode feedback loop works when you draw the differential mode half circuit the common mode resistor is kind of loading your gain so which means in order to not affect the final gain you have to choose a large value for rcm but if your output resistance is very large to begin with choosing a, a resistor much larger than the output resistor might not also be not so practical so in cases where you have a very high gain so uh, this resistor will load and drop your dc gain so let's see if we can uh, do something to work around that so i'll start with the same thing we had i'll quickly erase all the clutter here i'll draw everything with the same color to avoid overload of colors This is CCM by two, and this is, and across this we had an additional capacitor for adding the zero. If you recollect, that was to take care of the parasitic capacitor at the gate. Right? Cool. So now the issue is the following: the resistor we are using for sensing the output common mode is directly loading your differential mode half circuit, right? So. Uh, let's see what we can do so let us say i want to have the resistor because that is what i am using for sensing the common mode i want to connect it but i want to make sure that this doesn't load this guy so how do you suggest i connect this i mean i want to connect the resistor here for sensing the voltage this but i don't want to connect it directly like this because we can add a buffer simplest thing so let me do that so i'll basically slightly modify this i'll push it here be not so small yeah so essentially we want to add a buffer here and then connect it and what is the simplest buffer you know how do you implement a buffer not common source common drain source follower so let me do that so this takes in the first one similarly you have another source follower maybe okay 
so now the common mode sensing resistor is no longer directly connected to the output so in the differential mode picture this will not basically load your circuit fine that's a, a good thing but now let us say i call the voltages here as vop and vom that is the total voltage and let us say the source followers here are biased at some current say iy so let us say for this guy the gate voltage is vop it's biased at a current iy so what can you say about this voltage uh, the gate is vom it's at a biased at a current iy so source voltage is vom minus that vgs at the current iy this is the total voltage okay similarly the other guy it's vop so uh, what can you say about this voltage same thing vop minus vgs of the transistor at current iy so now you look at it the actual voltages that are getting averaged by the common mode detector is these two guys so what is the signal that is fed to the ota now is average of those two signals which is your required common mode minus vgs at the current iy basically it's average of these two so in addition to the required vocm which is the average of the outputs you also have one vgs drop so which means this feedback loop will make sure that these two voltages are equal so in steady state you will find this will be equal to vcm ref but is that what you wanted no right you wanted vocm to be set to this reference vcm but now we have an additional drop so what is a simple fix to uh, work around this problem so that vcm ref that vcm ref minus yeah so the idea is here also if we have the same vgs we are set i have a voltage vcm i somehow need to get a voltage vcm uh, minus vgs at a current iy so from this how do i generate this voltage yeah basically if i feed it through a same source follower same transistor same current okay now if i do this this voltage will now be this and the feedback loop will lock to the required value right so this let's call this a uh, third variation so this is uh, something that you can do okay so we can also do another uh, trick to avoid the loading so let me actually copy this again Let's see this so we feed in so let's say we are not using the buffer earlier this was the connection and we feed in vcm ref right this was what we had before and here is where we had the problem of this resistor loading right and now if you think about it uh, what is this resistor doing what is the job of the resistor here it is finding the average and fi feeding the average to this guy so here the voltage here is right so if i call this voltage as vx what can you say about the small signal current say ia gm times a uh, small signal things of that so let us say small signal vop plus vom by 2 minus vx so if you think about it the resistor is sensing the average in voltage and it is feeding that voltage to a transistor but the transistor doesn't care it converts it to a current so if you, somehow if you can uh, without using these guys if you can somehow generate this current and push it here the same thing will happen right so now let's see uh, no i'm this will have a small signal view small signal, those no let us say you also have a small signal common mode right right think here let us say something like this and then so yeah so now let's look at this current i can slightly massage this guy and 
rewrite it in a different way. I'll split it. Basically, I'll say GM by 2 times VOP minus VX. Fine. It's the same thing. So now uh, that begs the question. So I have to generate these two currents, add it and make it flow there. So I have, let's say, how do I generate this voltage uh, GM times VOP minus VX? I'll have another one NMOS transistor. That GM has to be GM by 2. That is compared to this transistor. This should be half. That we can do by sizing things appropriately. So now, now what will I do is I'll have one transistor here. Where should I connect the gate to? Let us say I want to get this VOP source to fine. And how do I generate the right current? I have one more transistor. VOM. I need to add the two currents. How can I do? I'll just connect it like this. And So this will do the same job. Now the only thing is I have to make sure that the uh, GM is half. These two transistors GM must be half compared to this guy. And that is straightforward. If this has a uh, width of W, I will have a width of W by 2 for this. Right? Now if you see the currents flowing, DC currents flowing in these two transistors will be half the current here. Right? So current is halved. Width is also halved, GM will also become half. So this is uh, another thing that you can do. This will again make sure that you are in the differential mode case, there is no resistive loading. So your DC gain will not get affected. Okay. Great. So to, uh, if you have to summarize, uh, till now we have seen basically uh, four variants in this category. So let's say type way is where I fix the NMOS current and tune only the PMOS current. The first was where we directly took the average and fed it to the gate. Second, let me mark it here, VOP, VON. Second was again the same thing. We had a resistive common mode detector, but we had an op-amp to Set it to the required VCM. Okay. Right. Now today we saw uh, two other techniques. One was to uh, not directly connect this guy to a resistor, but use a buffer and do this. And the last one was to use a, basically in these cases we are still using a resistive common mode detector. In this case, the common mode is detected not in terms of voltage, but in terms of current, right? And that we are doing using two transconductors. And then you basically do this and then you have the other transistor and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Right? So again, uh, the issue with the resistive case is it is basically uh, loading your differential mode circuit and reduces your DC gain. Whereas here, that's not the case. I will say no resistive loading. Right. But main issue with using uh, these kinds of uh, CMFB is the following. See, in the first two cases, the output was directly connected to the resistor here like this. Right. Whereas here the output is directly connected to a MOS transistor. Now uh, let us say here the output let us say swings like this. That entire swing is basically fed to these transistors. Now remember the transistors must all remain in saturation. So this transistor will impose additional constraint on your swing limits. This, I mean, this is all assuming that this guy behaves in small signal linear thing. If you have wide signal swings, that might not be the case. Okay. Whereas uh, in these cases, 
only the average of the two signals was fed to the transistor. So individually the outputs might be swinging differentially large, but if the common mode swing is limited, this is better, right? So uh, the downside here is it has, let us say, I'll say limited swings. Here, let us say, so essentially if you find a case wherein you want to have a very high DC gain, which of these two will use? If you want to have a large DC gain, you don't want it to be loaded by a resistor, this is better. But there the issues, of course, swings will be limited. So if you have a case where we have not so high swings, but DC gain is the critical thing, this is better. And for the other scenario, this is better. Okay. Cool. Uh, 